Hello everybody, the Law and Gnome is here. Hmm, that's odd. Usually the blood gets off at the second floor. Then you can mash. Then you can monster mash. The monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. Then you can mash. You'll catch on and all fly. Welcome to another Halloween double feature here on my channel. So if you are new here, let me just say welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. But all of you returning, I'm sure you're all very excited because this is the one time of the year where I dive into the world of film in the area of spooktacular stuff. Whether it is a horror, a horror comedy, a horror-themed or gothic-themed cult classic, something that I've seen many times before, or something that I'm seeing for the first time, this is always an exciting video to make, just because of the fact that I really get to go into some of the most interesting movies ever made. And once again, we're going to dabble into the world of the great Tim Burton, because when it comes to anything that can give you a spooky tone, but a a lot more than just that, it always brings a smile to my face. So, I am very excited to go over the two movies that I have chosen for you guys this year. And we're going to start off with, of course, one of the most well-known and most popular films in Tim Burton's library, and that, of course, is Beetlejuice, starring a thin Alec Baldwin, Gina Davis, Catherine O'Hara, Jeffrey Jones, Winona Ryder, and of course, the ghost with the most himself, played by Michael Keaton. I may not talk much about this movie. As a matter of fact, I rarely reference this movie, but I know for a solid fact that when it comes to Tim Burton's films, when you talk about his library, Beetlejuice is probably one of the first names of his films that comes to mind. But, you know... I have this movie, I really do enjoy this movie, but I hadn't seen it as many times as others. So, this time around, because I'm reviewing it for you guys, I really wanted to dive deeper and really see what is it about Beetlejuice that makes it such a classic amongst Tim Burton fans and movie fans in general. Well, paying real close attention this time around, I understand. Beetlejuice is one of the flat-out funniest movies that Tim Burton ever gave us. Before he really showed us his serious side, and even before he even discovered Johnny Depp, he gave us two of the most outlandishly hilarious comedies in Pee-wee's Big Adventure in 1985, and of course Beetlejuice in 1988. It is such an interesting and comedic look at the dead, the afterlife and purgatory, everything that involves death. I've never seen it in such a more lighthearted and humorous fashion, and it has to do with the casting. It's the story of a young couple who unfortunately passes away in a tragic accident, but they're having trouble finding their peace, and all of a sudden, a new family moves into this house, and their intentions don't really seem to be as good as what theirs were when they were alive. But they do have a daughter who really doesn't seem to feel that she fits in and also discovers the ghost because she seems to have this way to find the spirits and also communicate with them and understand their intentions and also see what her parents' intentions are. This movie is just a fun fling. It's got such funny moments and great comedy throughout, and Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice, as this renegade undertaker, if you will, who doesn't have the greatest of intentions, is trying to find a way to convince the Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis ghosts to go along with him and pretty much do some pretty nasty stuff that is going to cause the world of the dead and the world of the living to collide in a very bad way. There is also some great use of stop-motion animation, and I love the fact that Tim Burton, even though this was a time when special effects really didn't hit their peak, he really did bring out the best in the old style of animation, especially with stop-motion. Also, the highlight of this movie has to be Sylvia Sidney, who plays June. She also played the elderly grandmother in Mars Attacks in 1996 with that famous line, they just killed Congress, but she definitely has some of the best and most laugh out loud moments of this film. And of course, you cannot talk about a Tim Burton movie without talking about the Danny Elfman score. Or can you? I'll give you an understanding as to the reason as to why I just said that, but the Danny Elfman score in this movie is one of the most memorable pieces. It's so much fun and it just 
works with the movie perfectly. It, as fun as Beetlejuice might be, it really still is not one of my absolute favorites. There are so many other Tim Burton movies that I have watched, especially being a collector of a lot of great Tim Burton movies, that I just find to be a little bit better than Beetlejuice. But I still feel that Beetlejuice is an excellent watch, and it's fun for the family, which is why I'm going to give it a three and a half stars out of four. But the next movie that we're going to go into is also a Tim Burton film, but it's not one of the movies that many talk about, and I personally think that it may be his very best. And that, of course, is the 1994 film Ed Wood, starring Johnny Depp, Sarah Jessica Parker, also Jeffrey Jones, Bill Murray, Patricia Arquette, not to mention the Oscar-winning performance of Martin Landau, who plays the great famed horror actor Bella Lugosi. And this is the true story, with a Tim Burton twist, of what may be known as the worst director in Hollywood history. Unless people can fight me on that and say that Tommy Wiseau might be the worst, but Ed Wood is claimed to be the worst, because he was known in the 1950s as a person who directed these really horrible science fiction and horror films, but because of the fact that his movies were just so terrible, a massive cult following later on after his passing, people just started following Ed Wood and really embraced the fact that a guy that was just out there to show his own vision, for better or for worse, didn't care what the reaction was going to be. He just wanted to make movies that he wanted to make for the sake of making them. This is also one of Johnny Depp's best performances. He is so lighthearted and loopy as Ed Wood. I absolutely find him to be a delight. And the chemistry between him and the rest of the cast, especially with Martin Landau's Bella Lugosi, I absolutely love the friendship that these two men developed developed when Ed Wood just loved this actor for being the universal movie monster Dracula and just believed that there was still so much that he could give the world of cinema even though he was in his old age. He also was dealing with a lot more troubles than we actually knew and there were also very interesting pieces of this movie that showed what goes on in an actor or even just a person in general when it comes to depression or just feeling like he or she is a has-been and how they cope with it. There is no Danny Elfman score in this movie. Actually, the score is done by Howard Shore, who composed the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. And this is such an amazing soundtrack. I love that it really tries to add the Universal Movie Monster spookiness to some of the songs. But it really is a very interesting movie about friendship, about following your dreams, and just doing what you can regardless of what others may think, especially when it comes to Ed Wood's lifestyle, especially for the 1950s, which was such a bold thing to reveal to the world. It was such an interesting thing to actually see it portrayed on screen. There also is Vincent D'Onofrio in this movie who plays Orson Welles. He looks like Orson Welles. It's uncanny, but he's not the voice of Orson Welles. It is actually the voice of Maurice LaMarche, who voiced the brain and who also also voiced Orson Welles in one of my favorite short-lived animated series, The Critic. You'll definitely have to check this out. It's a small role, but it definitely is very cool to see Vincent D'Onofrio playing Orson Welles. It also was really great to see what Hollywood was like in the 1950s. There was definitely a lot of glitz and glamour, considering the fact that we were heading into the 1960s, which was the end of the golden age of Hollywood. But if you have never seen Ed Wood and you are a Tim Burton fan, you must see this movie. It's so good. And I also love the fact that Tim Burton made it in black and white. The fact that he has made a few of his films, even his animated film Frankenweenie in black and white, is also such a bold thing. And that's what makes Tim Burton the great director that he is. So Ed Wood, without a doubt, may in fact be Tim Burton's best, at least if not one of his best films, which is why I would highly recommend it for so many people if you just want to see an interesting story about Hollywood and one of the most interesting characters that was part of this amazing world of filmmaking. And I am going to proudly give Ed Wood a solid four stars out of four.
there you go, everybody. That's my Halloween double feature. Two great movies to see on Halloween. I can't recommend them enough. I really want to know your thoughts if you've seen Ed Wood because I don't know that many people who have. And I just think it's a fantastic film. But Beetlejuice is great, too. So please put your comments in the box below, everybody. Let's discuss. And I'll see you in the next one. But for now, have a safe Halloween. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.